Are you a chronic selfie taker? While you may think you are social media savvy, others may call you vain, and researchers now say the obsession is causing a big problem in our digital age. Like, I don't think thoughts, I just feel. I just feel things. Oh no, look at her. Uh -uh. <laughs> Why so serious? Can anyone tell me like what I would talk to my mom about if she's not going to be making me relevant? <laughs> now I have a career and I'm famous. Like that's what happens when you get famous. You cut people off. Few man-made horrors beyond my comprehension are truly so beyond my comprehension in their horror as the front-facing selfie camera. You know, the Greeks and the Romans had a myth about a guy that became so entranced and in love with his own reflection that he killed himself. That is the short version of the story. But the point is, humans have known for a very long time that becoming too self-centered, becoming too obsessed with your self-image is a very dangerous thing and that the gateway to the self-destructive self-obsession was simply the ability to perceive yourself. The good thing though, was that for the longest time, it was truly very difficult to actually look at yourself. This could mostly only be done by looking at your reflection in water, or if you were a rich nobleman, maybe a shiny piece of metal. That was until the invention of the mirror in 1835. Immediately, this invention began to cause a significant cultural shift. With this newfound self-perception, people began to start demanding more privacy. They began to create personal identities outside of that of their culture, community, and family. And all in all, they just became generally more self-aware. And according to an article I read, this is also when people began to record their birth dates and use astrology to, quote, find out more about themselves. Now this claim was presented to me without evidence. So now I very confidently pass it on to you without evidence. But it makes perfect sense if you ask me that this self-perception would lead to the incredibly self-centered phenomena of astrology culture. And this idea that the position of the stars and planets somehow affects you personally. With the advent of this readily available self-perceiving technology and the cultural consequences that came with it, society as a whole was steadily moving away from older ideas of collectivism and towards these newer ideas of individuality. And by the late 1900s, I think it's safe to say that basically everyone now saw themselves as individuals first before seeing themselves as a part of something greater. But then finally, in June of 2010, the worst possible thing to ever happen, happened. Maybe not the worst, but it's definitely up there. The invention of the front-facing selfie camera. If there was truly one invention that could be uninvented that might single-handedly save Western civilization from sliding off a cliff, it might be this one. I don't think we realize how the existence of so many things that are now a fundamental part of society exist because of this, the front-facing camera was invented of June in 2010. Instagram was invented in October of the same year. Other apps, Snapchat, Vine, TikTok, dating apps like Tinder, all of these things that rely on an individual's ability to easily take a picture or a video of themselves exist because of the simple placement of this camera. Google announced in 2019 that their Android devices were taking 93 million selfies a day. The average European taking 590 selfies a year. And that, pals and gals, is just Google's Androids. And I think we all know that it's the people with the iPhones that are taking all the selfies. So we can only imagine what that number is. But let's stop here for a moment just to think about how insane this all is. For all of our history, humans simply did not have the ability to view themselves with any real clarity until now. Now, we're taking millions of high definition pictures of ourselves every day. You know, I've heard that there's some Native American peoples who believe that having pictures taken of you steals your soul. Hmm. Why would they believe something so superstitious and archaic? Why would someone think that having a picture taken of you makes you lose your soul. Now I have a career and I'm famous. Like, that's what happens when you get famous, you cut people off.
seriously? I mean, everyone's upset with it, maybe because you guys aren't relevant either, so you don't understand. <laughs> Yo, what's up? My name is Yo. Owen. I am the best person in the house. I'm the best looking, I'm the most outgoing, and I am the most fun. I love modeling, acting, anything that involves cameras. Like, I just love the attention. This girl is making her boyfriend take a picture of her in front of a Smash T-Mobile. I truly believe that all of the ancient cultures knew everything that was worth knowing and that now we are just feebly trying to use technology to relearn all of the things that they already knew. A wise tribesman could have told you cameras are evil, they'll take your soul. A Greek philosopher could have told you don't look at your reflection, you're going to die. But now guess what? I'm basically going to tell you the same thing except with more complicated language. Few things are as capable of hollowing someone out from the inside as the hyperinflated sense of self-importance they can derive from the handheld demon box and its ability to create a digital world where you always get to be the center of attention. Where everything is always about you, this self-absorbed narcissistic condition has been accurately dubbed as main character syndrome and we can very clearly see that these people who are living their best lives as the main characters of their own stories, yeah, they're not doing so well. We are watching them trade in their lives for internet clout and screen chemicals in real time. We are watching their souls rot away in real time. Now, as far as I see it, we have two different groups of people that are participating in this lifestyle, and these groups aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. We have the people performing their entire lives on social media for all to see, vlogging every single little thing, and Let's be real, we all know it's fake. That's group one, and then group two are the people who are watching and living vicariously through group one's self-centered and performative lives. Both groups are living in this self-obsession, one group doing it directly, the other indirectly. That is truly the utility of all these life slash relationship vlogs, is that you get to be a psychopath watching other psychopaths live a life that you can't. All enabled by one little camera. This camera came out less than 15 years ago. Just look at what's happened since. Influencer culture, TikTok drama TV shows, man-made horrors inconceivable to the imagination. The rates of depression, anxiety, and self-image issues are through the roof, especially for teens. Very simply, the ability to perceive and judge ourselves as well as project that observation out into the world for the approval or disapproval of others is driving us insane. We were never meant to be so painfully aware of ourselves. We were never meant to see the inner lives of so many people. We were never meant to be able to insert ourselves into every little thing that has nothing to do with us. Sorry to break it to you, Chief, but your life's not a movie. You're not being watched. You don't need to live your life like you're always performing. No one's paying attention to you. Everyone is too busy paying attention to themselves. And it's very clear to see that the more self-centered a social media platform is, the worse it is for your mental health. So I would say either avoid those platforms entirely or only use them for a specific purpose that isn't posting about yourself. And generally, just get over yourself. You are only as special as you are useful and your utility ends where your inflated sense of self-importance begins. And if you think that you're somehow changing the world by putting an emoji in your bio or regurgitating some regime-sponsored opinion, you're either lying to yourself or delusional. Just look at how pathetic and stupid celebrities look when they do it and know that you look much worse. You don't need to have a stated opinion on every single issue. You don't need to insert yourself into every little thing that has nothing to do with you. No one knows how to mind their own business anymore because now everything is everyone's business and we expect everyone else to accommodate for our insanity. As a wise man once said, stop it, get some help, and please, Please get off your phone. Stop wasting your life on the gram like a sycophant. Well, won't you sacrifice for those likes that leave you feeling empty every time? For the record, I do have Instagram. I primarily use it to get in touch with people and post channel announcements. So if you have Instagram, you can follow me there. Otherwise, don't use the platform. If you're not following me, there's literally no other reason to use it.